All right, so we'll march on. I can still stream for a little bit longer today. Let's keep going. It is Boston next at lovely TD Garden, where P.O. Joseph is fully healthy. We did lose that game 3-2. to two. So let's, uh, let's see what happens. So Hirvonen is still out. SDA has gone without a point in five games, which is brutal. Bellavo, hopefully we don't lose you. We probably won't. SDA, hopefully we do lose you. You're trash. Uh, I want to call up a different center while we can. And uh, let's go with Larson just to give him a chance. SDA wasn't even claimed. That uh, shows you where his stock is at right now. So we'll bring in Larson. Again, not allowed to play Gino. Swap him with Dvorsky. Uh, and then defensively, we will get P.O. Joseph in for everything. And down in the AHL, same things, best lines. Uh, we will take out Jeff Carter for... Let's go Philip Hollander on that one. And defensively, of course, the same changes we always have to make. We'll get Emil Vero in there. Take out Willsby. What happened to Crosby? We traded him at the deadline last year. It was the final year of his deal. We were blowing it up. We spun the wheel to see if he wanted to leave, and it landed on yes. Let's give Schnattinger some more games here. Maybe play Belovo. I mean, I have to prioritize the other guys, but that's why I want to make trades so that Belovo can play. Florida Panthers, we lose in a shootout. Minnesota's next. We win 3-2. to two. Get One more game for the current goalies here as we play the New York Rangers. Pretty good team on a hot streak, 8 in their last 10, and we lose 8-1. to one. Jesus. Got absolutely dumped on by the New York Rangers. Ugh. We play Anaheim. Ronnie Hirvonen's healthy. We win 3-1. to one. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, we traded Sid and went 14-4-1. and one. So... <laughs> Weird as the game is. Uh, let's get Ronnie Hervenen back in. Get I'm okay with that minus one. Svechnikov on 27 points. Still just seven goals for him, which just... He has like 98 offensive awareness or some shit. It's crazy. Winnipeg. We lose six to three. A couple of big losses lately. Detroit. That's two losses in a row and three of our last four. Bring Scrimes in. We're almost to February here. Final game before the new month. And we win 7-4. We're in a wild card spot, for God's sakes. We started off that hot. And we're in a goddamn wild card spot. As insane as that is. So is that dude getting banned? <laughs> Possibly. He might. The deadline's on March 8th. Oh my god. Can you imagine if we miss the playoffs? That would be a Buffalo Sabres from like two or three years ago, like Collapse, when Jeff Skinner was what everyone was hoping Jeff Skinner would be. The goaltending is getting worse. The goaltending is getting worse. Jones has just nine points. McIsaac has 11. So McIsaac has heated up a little bit. But you could argue whether or not McIsaac is worth that. You know? I still don't hate the idea of trading Jones and McIsaac and just promoting from within. Svechnikov's on 29 points. Svechnikov is a, a top line is a fucking minus right now. Are you kidding me? Stenberg's up to 23 goals. Second line's looking great. Third line, looking pretty good. Fourth line, honestly, isn't brutal. I mean, I don't want to put all the blame on Andrei Svechnikov, but man. He only had 37 points last year. He's on pace for less than 60. I'm just trying to decide if I want to keep Jared McIsaac long term. When again, we have Brower, Vero, Swart, like we have Pope, all of these guys that deserve a chance. Let's see what's out there. 
Let's see what's out there. We have two trades left at our disposal. Is there anything out there that can entice me? I mean, there is a defensive prospect in Laleem. The problem is he's a fucking lefty. I need, I need a right defender, for the love of God. Although Anaheim, honestly, I mean, Laleem, Danielson at center. We do have a lot of center depth, though. And Joaquin Wang, but he's also a lefty and a minus 26 with San Diego. Anaheim's not that bad if I wanted to just go the prospect route. Liam Danielson Wang, but again, that just that doesn't help that left hand side log jam at all. Arizona's getting rid of Kraus, Dickinson, nobody that we want. Boston, Ulanoff, Kid. Ulanoff has badges, Lincoln Kid, eh. Buffalo, Bryson, Astapchik, no. Mangiapani. How would Andrew Mangiapani do on that top line compared to Andrei Svechnikov? He's a bit older. And that's why we wanted to go with Svechnikov is because he's still young, but... Do we trust him? Tony D'Angelo. Hey, John Marino. <laughs> well, that would solve our right-hand side issue. Let's just bring... Let's just send him back. Svechnikov for Marino. Cancel the trade. Send it back. Could I actually do that? <laughs> If I do this, this if I do this, it cancels out the other trade, and we say I still have three trades. Fair? <laughs> Can I just send them back? Can we have a fucking play the Uno reverse card on this some bitch? <laughs> fucking hell! Will it go through? I mean, think if we take back John Marino. That right-hand side, I mean, the problem is, like, Joseph and Marino really didn't gel. Salmonson and Joseph have done pretty well. But, like, Roger and Corcoran haven't been that bad. They've been fine. Do it to send back Jack Drury, too. Yeah, you're right, so we're not doing it. Uh, <laughs> it'd be a good meme, though. Uh, again, I really don't think we need a defenseman. Uh, ooh, Chicago. Jody O'Sullivan and Don Reed. All right, Chicago's interesting. Two pretty damn good prospects. Um, they really don't need any defense, though. They really don't. So maybe not. That's not really a good fit. Colorado, Agostino, Columbus get rid of Colborn, but he's basically the only one. Dallas, nobody. Detroit. Yeah, shocking they don't want to move Sid. Edmonton would be Hyman and CC. Zach Hyman's got three years left at five and a half. I wonder how Zach Hyman would do on our top line as our our one old man. You know, like how would Zach Hyman do on our top line as an old man? They have no cap space though, and they also don't really have anybody else to give up. Yeah, I don't know if we'd want to trade Savetchnikov for Zach Hyman. You know. One of the defenders could work out. Nah, they don't need defense, though. They're already log-jammed. Florida, nobody we want to get. Uh, nobody on the Kings, either. Mm. Oh, wow, Montreal. What do you know? You're trying to shop all three of the wingers you just signed. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought, you fucking idiots? Uh, Brad Marchand does have... Man, Brad Marchand's still crushing it, huh? They do need defensive help. At the very least, morale appears to be an issue. Yeah, they need defensive help. Traded one of our defensemen to pick up Brad Marchand as a rental. And then figure out our long-term answer at left wing later. They have two draft picks this year. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Jeff Gorton. I think uh, he got booted out. Jim Benning's in Montreal at this point. Nashville doesn't have anybody that I want. Uh, Sharkoff, no thank you. The Islanders with Ishikov, but he's a center, so I don't really have space. Old Man Kreider? Old Man Chris Kreider just have a douchebag in front of goal? 
I mean, Kreider or Marshawn could work. Um, the the, uh, the Habs are a better fit. The Habs are a better fit, though. Sends with Genoa, but he's trash. Philadelphia. Fowler's not bad, but obviously I'm not making that trade with Philly. Kopitar, but I don't have room for him. Cooley. Callan Lind. The other Jack Hughes. I mean, a bunch of prospects from Toronto. Toronto needs defense. I mean, Toronto would be the good prospect route if I were to move Zach Jones uh, or McIsaac. There isn't a natural trade for Svechnikov. As Vancouver's looking the fire cell. Like, the, the thing with Svechnikov is that he's 25, 26, so he's a long-term investment, whereas Connor Garland's up at the end of the year, and who knows how much he'd want. You know, and obviously Brad Marchand's just a one-year band-aid. Ooh, Daniel Sprong. Daniel Sprong. Now, is he a product of playing on a Caps team that still has the likes of Alex Ovechkin? But he's making five mil for two years. He's a couple years older. But maybe Daniel Sprong, and he gives us some maneuverability being a second liner. I don't I don't know if there's a if there's a sure thing right now in terms of trades. What I do know is that I do like Toronto for the sake of um, picking up some of their defensemen. Anaheim doesn't really fit. They're overloaded. But we could make a deal with Toronto for the sake of acquiring a couple of defenders. But the problem is I don't really want to deal either of these guys to an Eastern Conference team. I, I agree about Svechnikov, but right now my concern is the defense. Because I really, like, McIsaac's heated up a little bit. I think we'll wait. I think we'll wait. I mean, McIsaac's heated up a little bit. Jones is still a bit disappointing. Maybe we can bump up McIsaac and Roger because they've been pretty good together. I actually, no, I can't because I can't drop Jones down. So we just need Zach Jones to figure it the fuck out. And um, I don't think he will because I've been waiting for him to figure it out for a couple of seasons now. Florida's next. We win 2-1. to one. We do have the, the big all-star slash Olympic break that's always put in. I guess this year it would actually be an Olympic break. Uh, we play New Jersey and lose 4-2. to two. Maybe he's dealing with a lot right now. You know, Rich, I, I'm just being inconsiderate. You're right. Nashville, we win 3-2. to two. Joseph has 55 points now. Vegas, we lose 5-1. to one. Mm. Honestly, the goaltending has been far too inconsistent for my liking. This might be it for Blomkvist here soon. Philadelphia, we lose 6-3. to three. We are crashing back down to reality and hard. Carolina. We win in the shootout. Colorado. We lose in the shootout. St. Louis. We lose. Try price. I can't try price unless we move somebody else. God, both Scrimes and Blongfist haven't gotten it done. I'm okay with the idea of moving Clang. Also in the AHL, let's get Schnattinger. Some more games. How's the AHL team doing, by the way? 44, 13, and 1. That sounds about right. Uh, we play Dallas. And we win 2 to nothing. We play Los Angeles. We lose 4 to 3. Welcome to March. Deadline's approaching fast. And we play Vegas. And lose 6 to 4. We're a wild card team right now. Goaltending has not been good. It's gotten worse as the season's gone on. We do beat the Sharks. We have one more game against a god-awful Seattle club before the deadline. 
I'm okay with the idea of giving up on Blomkvist. I'd rather just run Scrimes and then either Clang or Carry Price. Um, honestly, we might as well move Clang if he has value. Or we could hold on to Clang and then have Carry Price. Um, but obviously, that Goodrow and Snattinger is still good to go. The defense. Joseph has been great. Solomonson has been solid. Zach Jones has been a disappointment. And honestly, he's dragging down Connor Corcoran. And then McIsaac has been okay. And McIsaac is holding on for dear life. Juke, it comes out uh, on Thursday, the 9th. Jones and McIsaac, I'm just unsure. Svechnikov has... Th yeah, Andre, Andre's done. Andre's done. He is currently on a 52-point pace. That's not good enough. When you're playing with Jake Gensel, that's not good enough. And as it is, Gens is uh, a little bit behind the pace we need him to be on. Stenberg has 29 goals. So yeah, no, I'm I'm good with the idea of getting rid of Andre Svechnikov. Uh, for whatever reason, he is just not putting up the points that we need him to put up. And you could blame Stenberg if you want, but I mean, there's no reason Gensel should be uh, posting up more assists. You know, if Stenberg and Gensel have the goals, Savechnikov should be on like 45, 50 assists. So we gave him a chance to prove that he's more than what he appeared to be, and he, he hasn't. Holloway is great. Drury's great. Poulin's great. Happy with uh, with uh, Fedor Savechnikov. Happy with Dvorsky. Happy with Kamel. Uh, fourth line, Anson's hasn't been awful. He doesn't he doesn't put up the points I'd want a fourth liner to put up. Um, neither does Hirvinen, and neither really does, does Cohen Zemmer. Um, but that's that's okay. I think we can actually Zemmer does put up the points I, I need him to. But that line hasn't been brutal at least. Sevechnikov has to go. They play seven minutes a night. You can still contribute. Case in point, Cohen Zemmer. He's over a 20-point pace. He's going to play seven minutes a night. Svech, uh, Svechnikov has to go. Jones has to go. McIsaac is probably going to go. And I'm done with Joel Blomkvist. So we have four targets to get rid of here. Do I want to take care of my business before the deadline because of how crazy it is? Like, I like trade deadline day, but to be honest, it just, it moves so fucking fast. I get that's the point. Let's go to the deadline. We will be buyers, technically. And we will enter the deadline. We have two trades that we can make. Brock Besser, Jake Ottinger's available. His deal's up at the end of the year. John Marino's back on the block. I don't really think we need a right defender. Travis Sanheim. I mean, Sanheim is a lefty. You could argue Brock Besser for that top line. You could. If these are the top dudes out there, Mangiapane, Kreider, Kane, Garland. We have a trade already. It's Ishikov on the move to Seattle. Um... One problem from this menu is you can't click to... I mean, I know it shows everything, but still. Let's see what's out there. Let's let's get a full look at what's out there, not just the uh, the hot properties. So, I mean, again... Um, boy, poor, poor Sam Reinhardt. He's definitely better than that. Reinhardt's on an expiring deal. Um, he's not a, too bad of a way to go. Ethan Bear to Toronto. Um... Boston's moving Ulan off. I don't think we want to look specifically for prospects. Buffalo has a fire sale going on right now. Mangiapani's out there. I feel like his value has gone up. Mangiapani might honestly be more valuable than Besser. For the sole fact that he's under contract for longer. Again, I don't think we need John Marino. I don't think we need Tony D'Angelo either. Marco Rossi just got dealt for Tyson Forster. Strong Ben Edmondson. Obviously, I'm having to look really fast here because of the nature of the deadline. 
still have all that shit, including Brad Marchand being moved. Kreider's out there. Brady Kachuk is out there. He's got three years left at $8 million. Kraken have made another move. Um, mostly involving draft picks and Anderson Dolan. Brady Kachuk's the first line wing. So his overall's down. And that is, talk about again, buying low. He's a little bit more expensive than Svechnikov. Uh, Travis Sanheim. Wow, Travis Sanheim's out there. Man, Sanheim. Sanheim and Joseph on that left-hand side. I like Sanheim. I like the deal for Kachuk. So long as he doesn't get moved. Obviously, Besser's out there, but he's 29. He's on a five-year deal. Would you rather go for Brady Kachuk with him being younger? I mean, again, Garland would be bad, but he's on a one-year deal. Besser's not really putting up the points either. I think I'd rather go for Kachuk. I feel like the chemistry-wise, it might work out better. And then goalie-wise, I know Ottinger was out there. Gibby, Gibby's out there as well from Anaheim. Markstrom is in the toilet right now. But here's the thing. We don't need Ottinger when we have... Like, yes, we need better goaltending. But we have an X-Factor goalie that we're trying to train up. And Ottinger's going to want like $9 million at the end of the year. I think our targets are Sanheim and Kachuk. I think that's exactly who our targets should be. That's if they don't disappear. So for Travis Sanheim, he's making eight mil. He's only twenty nine. Mangiapane just got dealt to Boston. Yes, please. Uh, let's hope I have the cap space to do this. By the way, <laughs> that Carey Price waiver claim might fuck us over. But if I use Savetchnikov to get Sanheim, again, I also have Blomqvist that I want to use. Price actually has value. Savetchnikov and Blomqvist. That's eleven million dollars for Sanheim. Uh, I am good with this. And Brady Kachuk just got dealt to Dallas. Fuck. Couldn't move fast enough. What if we had Philly's third rounder next year? Will this go through? They would take it, but they'd have to put Jonathan Taves on waivers. What about just outright? I'll give you the value. Fuck. So Brady's gone. We do still have other forwards we can target. But I want Travis Sanheim here. Um... I would also take on Kevin Hayes, but I don't think I can now because of price. That carry price claim really fucked us over. What if we take Kevin Hayes, but you retain salary? There we go. So Svechnikov and Blomqvist, I get Travis Sanheim. I'll take on Kevin Hayes for the rest of the year. What do we think? Done deal. Travis Sanheim. Welcome, sir. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have one trade left we can use. We need to see if Dallas is willing to immediately flip Brady Kachuk or not. Otherwise, we have to look for a new winger. Not necessarily, but it would make sense. So that's not a bad bit of business. They are not interested in trading Brady Kachuk. So... Besser's available. We ended up getting Sanheim. Besser might be our best bet, but I really don't have confidence in it. Because Mangiapane is also gone. There is Elias Lindholm. I don't remember if he can play the wing or not. I think he can. Or if we don't go for Besser, we go for a short-term option like Brad Marchand or Chris Kreider. I think those are our best options now. We go for a short-term solution with uh, Marchand or Kreider. And yeah, Dallas is really a move for their future, I guess, with Brady Kachuk. <sighs> Marchand on the year. 29 goals, 33 assists at 37 years old. So again, 29 goals, 33 assists for the New York Rangers. Kreider has 30 goals. I love the fact that Kreider has uh, has big tipper. Marsha, honestly, I'm leaning Kreider. I'm leaning Kreider on this one. 
I'm going. I think Kreider with Gensel provides that proper balance. Now Kreider's also signed through next year, which could complicate things, but we'll deal with what we got to deal with. I want to move on from Zach Jones. I want to move on from Jared McIsaac. Um, I'd be over the cap. Apparently, does it make sense again for the Ranger? It doesn't make any sense though to take Kreider while giving up defensemen. So because we were planning the other deal involving uh, Kachuk and it went uh, went belly up, I still think Montreal makes more sense than Kreider. We're going to have to go after uh, Brad Marchand and hope that he's a proper fit. Um, and I don't really think I screwed over Philly by giving them Svechnikov. It's fucking Svechnikov. So I'd rather go after Brad Marchand. Um, I do think he fits the team a little bit better. But we do need Montreal to retain salary because I am up against it right now. Although I am very tempted to send them Carey Price back. Very tempted to send them back Carey Price, although they can't fucking afford him either. So we'd also have to take somebody else back in the deal. Um, you're not wrong that... Oh, fuck, you're right. They do have Matthew Kachuk on... Okay, that changes things. We couldn't get Brady, but can we get Matthew? Same style. Vancouver has made a deal. I think we go after Brady Kachuk here. I think we do. What else can I add to this deal? Um, I'll add in Josh Brook. Now, I'd be over the cap. Here's the problem. I need to send them back some salary and hope that they don't fucking trade Matthew before I can get this deal done. Uh, the Jeff Carter of Kenny Malkin cap whale shit is is brutal on me right now, but maybe I highly doubt they're willing to take Jeff Carter for that. I have to give up somebody else. Honestly, if I can get them to take Kevin Hayes, who we just brought in. Um, but we'll take on Brooke because Brooke is actually kind of useful to us. We, oh god, I don't want to take on Lars Eller at all. Shit. Um... We'll take on Mestra, even though he's terrible. Montreal would have too many skaters in the league. How would you have too many skaters in the league? How would you... Oh, because Mestra was in the AHL, wasn't he? Yeah, fuck. Um, give me Langlois. So it's Zach Jones, Jared McIsaac, Kevin Hayes, for Matthew Kachuk, Josh Brook. And Lang if that goes through, I'm willing to take it. And it didn't. Uh, what else can we add here to push this over the edge? What else can we add here? Um, Rucker McGroarty could be added. Rosen could be added. Uh, Emil Vero, Bluan. Oremba, I don't want to get rid of. What about Garcia? Maybe Hobby Bullen or Christensen. Uh, are they willing to take Fortier? It, yeah, it's got to be someone who's not under contract. Uh, I'll give up the Anaheim third. Not enough. I'm willing to give up a second to get this done. If that works instead. The second rounder from Nashville. Sweeten it just a touch. So we're looking at Jones, McIsaac, Hayes, a second, and probably a fifth. For Matthew Kachuk, Josh Brook, and a defensive prospect. Okay, it might have to be a fourth instead of a fifth. Will this go through? You motherfuckers. What about a third? We'll do it. Jones, McIsaac, Hayes, a second and a third for Matthew Kachuk, Josh Brook, and Langlois. Let's go. We're done. Those are our two deadline deals. We acquire Travis Sanheim and Matthew Kachuk. Damn. Never saw that coming. So leaving the team is Svechnikov, Blomqvist, McIsaac, and Zach Jones. I think we did pretty well. I think we did pretty well. And now that left-hand side is Joseph and Sanheim to really bolster things up. It doesn't necessarily help the log jam of talent on the right, but it does allow me to uh, wait and see as the Bruins have acquired Brendan Lemieux. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I mean, Sanheim. I'm intrigued to see what this roster looks like now, but I think we did pretty well there. And somehow I made the cap work, and I don't know how. 
after taking Carey Price as a meme? Because I didn't think we'd be making that many moves at the deadline. Again, I'll recap all of this in a minute. But let's let's focus on us first. This is very important. So goalie-wise, it's Scrimes, Clang, and I'm also going to call up Carey Price, or not. At least not at the moment. Defensively, Joseph Sanheim. Uh, Langlois will be sent down. Rich, I love you. Um... Let's call up Carey. So then it's Joseph, Sanheim, and I need somebody on the left. It might as well be Brower. Let's give Brower the chance. It's him or Sward. Actually, Emil Vero. It's it's make or break time for Emil Vero. That's where we're at. Um, we're gonna leave Brower and Sward their last bit of time here to develop. And then Josh Brook can be a healthy scratch, potentially. Forward-wise, Gensel Kuchuk, Poole Landry, Holloway Stenberg, Kamel Swatch, got Dvorsky, Malkin, Hirvin, and Larson, Semmer. Uh, let's send Larson down for Emil Vero. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got. Honestly, I'm going to send down Evgeny Malkin really quickly. I am sure he'll clear waivers on that cap. Can you imagine if someone claims Malkin on 18 million? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gino, but down you go. So... Looking at the team, then, it is now going to be uh, Kachuk with Stenberg and Gensel. We're going to have Holloway, Jury, Poulan, Svechkov, Dvorsky, Kamel, Anson, Sierven, and Zemmer. This team has changed a lot very fast. Never imagined we'd have Matthew Kachuk, but here we are. And again, just for the player types, I feel like having that power forward, that dominant net front presence in Kachuk should help really Jake Gensel just destroy worlds. Defensively, it's going to be Joseph San or Joseph and uh, Salmonson. Sanheim. And let's go with Corcoran? I don't necessarily want to use Josh Brook yet because he was attack on. We'll go Sanheim, Roger, Vero, Corcoran. And then if somebody's struggling, we'll try to get Josh Brook in there. But he is a depth defenseman. So we're going to give Emil Vero the chance. I mean, he's got the X-Factor. He's 23. It's kind of make or break for him. He's having a really good season in the AHL. Really make or break for him at this point. Scrimes and Clang will get the chance. Price is also there if need be. So this roster, despite uh, the limitations on how much we're able to do, this roster just keeps changing. A drastic amount of change in such a short amount of time because David, Here comes a pizza, we see? went from uh, oh, we went geez. from seeing CGM resubscribe for the 28 months. Good gracious, <laughs> CGM, how are you? Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. It is good to see you. Do you have any resources on the line, Fitz? Um, I mean, it's just for the most part, just pay attention to what the coaches are on the right hand side power forward sniper playmaker still works quite a bit but it's more so the uh, coaching chemistry so the AHL just to make sure there's no one scratched who should not be uh, we'll take Carter out for Johansson and let's uh, take Philip Hollander out I guess for Blue so that AHL team is gross. Defensively, we'll obviously take out Langlois, not for McCleary, but for Beliveau. We'll take out Willsby for Danner. And again, Luke Prokop, hate to tell you, uh, we're going to take you out for Bixel to prioritize our deal here. Goalie wise, good Drosh Schnattinger. Both of these teams should be playoff teams. The big question is just how well does Matthew Kachuk fit this team? Like, was Matthew Kachuk the missing piece on the top line? I never really imagined that we would have moved on from uh, from Andrei Svechnikov that fast. But end of the day, you uh, you see what you got. And if the job's not getting done, you find someone who can do the job. On the power play, I do want to use Joseph. I do want to use Sanheim. I do want to use Salmonson. It leaves room for one more dude. 
And uh, we're actually going to try Connor Corcoran on the power play because his numbers weren't all that bad. And it gives us another right-handed shot. Uh, I think Holloway... Yeah, Holloway has the better shot than Poulin. So we'd want Poulin setting up in front. Um, although Holloway was slightly better on the draw. But I want Holloway in more of a... Well, maybe not more of a shooter's position. And then Gensel definitely in more of a shooter's position. We're going to go Joseph, Salmonson, Corcoran, Santa. I like that power play a lot. The PK should be good now because, I mean, Matthew Kachuk is there. <sighs> this team's looking damn good. I really do think they are. And hopefully, again, Kachuk instead of Svechnikov is the guy that we needed. But I feel okay about moving on from Jones and McIsaac. I mean, God, we got Travis Sanheim who should be able to do what they couldn't. And worst case, if Sanheim can't, I mean, he was having an okay season in Philadelphia. He had more points than Jones and McIsaac combined. If Sanheim can't do what we need him to do, Brower, Pope, Danner, Sward, Bixel, Bellavo, like, we have the depth. So this might not be the year that we, like, totally step forward, For those but it could be. About to score, I As free fall on the prime. For the 18th month, free falling. How the heck are you? Let's uh, let's finish up uh, looking at the deadline here. I might not be able to finish up the season today. It's going to be close. But in terms of the deals, Earl Havaka 9 into Philadelphia for two seconds. There are other picks involved. Colin Miller's on the Leafs. Chemilevsky to Boston. Zaka's on Ottawa. Wallander to Toronto. Again, Brendan Lemieux to Boston, which is, ugh. Josh Anderson got dealt to Buffalo. The Matthew Kachuk deal, of course. Morgan Frost to New Jersey. Logan Brown to San Jose. Jacob Bryce and Dave Riddick to Florida. A couple of big deals here. Chris Tanev got dealt to Ottawa for a first somehow. Jamie Benz and Islander. Strom and Edmondson to Ottawa. Again, Brady Kachuk to Dallas. Manchia Pani and Shattenkirk to Boston. Nolan Allen got dealt to the Blues. Quite a big, quite a few big deals. Seattle got a first rounder. Good for them when they absolutely suck. Again, Forster for Rossi. Ethan Bear to Toronto. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Let's at least finish up the regular season. God, I'm cutting it close time-wise. I'm cutting it close, but I gotta know. We play Carolina, we win 7-1. to one. <laughs> You love to see that. Nice little 7-1 win. Callie Klang will get the opportunity here over Scrimes. Klang only played one game. He got lit up. He loses that one, too. So congratulations to Carey Price. You're now our new backup. Because Callie Klang cannot get it done. You know, just a casual 2x factor rotation there. Uh, it will be Scrimes against the New York Islanders. He loses. If Carey Price beats Boston, he gets to play Montreal in a revenge game. We might just start carry for the next two games anyway. We play Boston. Price loses. Ah, oh, it's Boston, Montreal, and Toronto. We're giving carry these games. Montreal. Carry Price in goal. We lose four to one. <laughs> and carry Price against Toronto. Carry lost all three fucking games. Absolutely cooked. He is absolutely cooked. An 891 in those three games with an 0-3 record. Jesus. He was good in Montreal. Not so good here. Thanks, Carrie. Appreciate it. We play Washington. We lose again. And we might actually miss the playoffs at this rate. All right. Price fell off plus ratio plus washed. Benjamin Goodrow. Old Benny boy. We're going to give you the chance. Shockingly, nobody claimed Carey Price. We're going to give Benjamin Goodrow an opportunity here. He's been a very, very good AHL-level goalie. We started off with strong goaltending this year. It's fallen off a cliff as Goodrow beats Carolina. 7-2 win. We play Buffalo next. We, lose, we win that one 7-2. Winnipeg? 
Three to two, three and zero. Oh, ben Gaudreau. With ten games to go in the season, we are somehow the second wild card team. Final game of March against Minnesota. We win again. <laughs> Trying to out voodoo this fucking thing. Ben Goodrow. Look at Benny boy. Crushing it. How's Kachuk doing? Yeah, I'd say Matthew Kachuk was a pretty good pickup. <laughs> I'd say that was a pretty good idea. That's looking pretty good. Uh, how's, how's Travis Sanheim doing next to Ben Roger? Eh, it's not too bad. Not too great, though. Rogers a minus four. Corcoran, Corcoran and Vero. Vero hasn't done much, but he is a plus nine. So Vero and Corcoran work out pretty well together. Uh, ben, I hate to tell you, but because of that, we're going to try to get Josh Brook in there. And uh, we'll see what he can do with Sanheim. I'm not afraid of the minus one. But we're going to give Josh Brook some games. So here we go. We march on. St. Louis Blues to begin April. We win seven to nothing. Benjamin Goodrow. What is happening right now? 5-0. and oh, Ben Goudreau with a 9-51. We play McDavid, Dreisaitl, and the Oilers. 6-0. and oh, Benjamin Goudreau. When will the streak end? P.O. Joseph has 80 points. <laughs> Oh my god, we're still, we're not even going to finish as a top three team. We're going to be a wild card team. That's how fucking ridiculous the Metro was. We play Vancouver. Fucking A, Benjamin Goodrow. This is unreal. Also, oh my god, just, I was going to talk about the playoffs. It's fine. We play Ottawa. Eight and O, oh, Benjamin Goodrow. <laughs> What is happening? Oh my god. Again, this is why I don't give a shit about overall. If somebody's gonna perform, they're gonna perform. He'll play the New York Rangers, who we are one point above in the wild card race. And finally, the streak ends at 8 0 for Ben Goodrow. We will get Nick Scrimes in for the next game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Scrimes wins it. He'll play again until we play Tampa. But what a run by Ben Goodrow to essentially secure us a playoff spot. And it is official. The Penguins are back in the playoffs for the first time since season one. It's season five. <laughs> oh, my God. Back-to-back -back wins for Scrimes. We play the Rangers again and beat them this time. So we do secure the top wildcard spot. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. But Ben Goodrow will get one more start against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And he loses. So he loses his last two. But with that, the Pittsburgh Penguins at 47, 26, and 9. Our first year without Sidney Crosby. And we make the playoffs. But look at how crazy the Metro was. Three teams won at least 50 games. And shockingly, that means we stay in this division. We will be playing Washington because the New York Rangers will be playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we will be playing the Washington Capitals, much like we did in Season 1. Columbus will play New Jersey, and New York, of course, will play Toronto. Philly and New York both sucked. And, of course, the other Atlantic matchup is Montreal and Detroit. Uh, Florida and Buffalo absolutely sucked. In the Central, you have Colorado. Minnesota and St. Louis. No one else was really even close. Dallas was horrible. Poor Brady Kachuk. Uh, but Minnesota will play St. Louis. Colorado will play Los Angeles. Vegas will play Edmonton. And Vancouver will play Anaheim. San Jose, Calgary, and Seattle. Abysmal. We would have won 70 games if we were in the fucking Pacific Division. <laughs> so throughout the league, were we a top 10 team? Yes, we were. We were ninth in the NHL. 12 teams finished with 100 points or more. That is insanity. They were the haves and the have-nots. And Seattle was the king of the have-nots with just 17 wins. Poor Seattle. In terms of goals for, we were up there. Not bad. Seventh best offense in the league. Goals against average at a 288, which was mid-table, which isn't overly surprising. 
Uh, our power play was good, but not great at 22%. And our penalty kill was somewhere in the middle. Okay, closer to the bottom. So maybe we address the PK. Could maybe look to change out the power play in the PK, but what a run. P.O. Joseph. We'll talk about him in a minute. We will start off with Jake Gensel. Jake Gensel earns us a point. He needed 70 points. He got 88. So that is our first scout that we've ever earned. Jake Gensel, thank you. We finally accomplished a goal for the season. And Gensel was great. 43 goals, which is a uh, career high, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's the most points that Gensel... Yeah, that's the most points Gensel's had and goals for us so far in this run, uh, which is nuts. Actually, well, in season one, he had 91 points, so never mind. But still, the most goals. Uh, Sam Poulin on the second line, a phenomenal 69 points. Great. Holloway, 46 goals, 67 points, which... Beautiful for Holloway, the AI cheese. Matthew Kachuk. 24 points in 20 games. He is exactly what Jake Gensel needed. Exactly what he needed. Only had three goals. But Matthew Kachuk, park that ass in front and let Jake Gensel do what Jake Gensel does. And it's working out tremendously. Uh, Aust uh, Otto Stenberg, excuse me. 39 goals as a rookie with 63 points. Might be a rookie of the year for Otto Stenberg. My controller keeps like dying and I don't know why. What's going on? It's not, it's, it's wired too, so I don't know what the hell's happening. 59 points for Jack Drury. Not a bad return on investment for him, huh? <laughs> My God. Joachim Kamel, 43 points on the third line was great. Same for uh, Svechkov with 34 on the third line. Dvorsky, all three members of our third line had at least 30 points. Hirvonen, uh, gotta be honest, disappointed. Disappointed in Ronnie Hirvonen, uh, but it was okay. Cohen Zemmer is the reason why I'm disappointed in Ronnie Hirvonen. Hirvonen has no excuse. Zemmer could put up the points. Uh, and then Anson's as well. Not the biggest point getter in the world, but the fourth line was okay, given the circumstances. They were okay. The defense. P.O. Joseph, baby. 88 points in 79 games. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. Travis Sanheim. Only nine points in 20 games and a minus four. Not good, Travis. Not good. Salmonson had 33 points next to Joseph. Corcoran with a decent 18 points. Nothing too crazy, but not bad. Uh, Josh Brook. No points in nine games, but was a plus one. Ben Roger, eight points and a minus four. And Emil Vero had two points in 20 games, but was a plus nine. So Corcoran and Vero look okay. Um, you can argue Brook and Sanheim can stay together over over uh, Sanheim and Roger, but I'm uh, I'm still a little bit concerned about Travis Sanheim now. And then goaltending wise, well, I wonder who our starter is heading into the playoffs. Well, I know Sanheim averaged the same amount in Philly, but I wanted it to be better. He should be better. He's on a better team. Uh, Benjamin Goodrow will likely get the start. Callie Klang has probably likely played his last game here. Around the league, Alex Ovechkin <laughs> and Leon Dreisaitl. Holy shit. Okay. Ovi scored 63 goals as a 40-year-old. McDavid, 104 points. Boldy was the only one to break 100. Gensel was up there in terms of scoring. In terms of goals, Ovi with 63, 59 for Matthews, 58 for Pearl Coles, and 54 for Dreisaitl, 51 for Stamkos. Yegor Chinnikov was up there. Dylan Holloway was up there, and I think that actually does have Ovi break 1,000. I, I joked, like, he won't break 1,000 this year. He'll fall just short. He scored 63 goals. 1,009 for Alexander Ovechkin. Somewhere between 50 and 63 goals now in all five seasons. Sis King, no surprise, was Kuznetsov, judging by who he was next to. For defensemen, as good as P.O. Joseph was, 
seven assists for Adam Fox. 28 goals for Rasmus Sandin. People are worried that by me putting Adam Fox at a 92 because we factor in three seasons that he wouldn't be good enough in franchise. You have reached the voice mailbox of God, Keandre Miller, Drysdale, Hamilton, a bunch of guys over 20 goals. And in goal, 47 wins for Connor Hellebuck. Shutout king was Lukas Dostal. And in terms of save percentage, <laughs> Ben Goodrow. Uh, Shesterkin was pretty damn good, but who needs Shesterkin when I have Ben Goodrow? Bassey was up there. Hellebuck was up there. That's a complete toss-up for who wins the Vesna. Rookie of the year. Well, we're winning it no matter what. It's either Otto Stenberg or Jack Drury. And I think it will be one Mr. Otto Stenberg. Acquired him from Edmonton for Brian DeMoulin Plus. I think that turned out to be a pretty good decision. Edmonton won a cup, though, so it worked out well for them, too. It's not like I ripped off one of the better prospects they drafted. That was a mutually beneficial trade. What a season. From, what, 17-0-1 or some crazy shit to starting the slip, and we bounce back only to make the playoffs in a wild card spot on 103 points. And again, we know who stands in front of us next. It will be the Washington Capitals. The rivalry that just refuses to die. There are some lineup changes we could potentially look at, primarily on the defensive side of things, and trying to get Sanheim going. Honestly, this, this could be the time to call up Ralph Brower and put him next to Travis Sanheim. And then in goal, I think Benjamin Goodrow might need to get the chance over Nick Scrimes because Goodrow is a big, big part of the reason as to why we're here. So some big decisions, man.